have heard about impotence. Mm -hmm. And mostly it comes with them. Those sperm counts. From it is the inability to have an erection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically, when the time comes, uh, stuff doesn't do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Hello and welcome to another segment with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we will be talking about erectile dysfunction and taking us through that topic is Dr. Malcolm Correa. Come with me. Thank you very much. Erectile dysfunction, as we have known, is the inability to have an erection and to have a penetrative uh, sexual intercourse with your partner. Uh, the definitions have changed a little bit, but essentially it is to more or less encompass the vascular component and as well as the neuropsychological components that you could have. It goes together with the causes, essentially, and it can be anything from trauma to congenital malformation, so things that people are born with, to um, drugs that are given to patients or to people whether they are taking them themselves, something like smoking, or whether it is medications for their hypertension, or even other disease states like uh, diabetes especially. The other things that can come in with this is surgical, uh, post-surgical trauma, or trauma essentially itself to the, to the pelvic region. We did a study at uh, Kenyatta National Hospital um, with colleagues where we looked at uh, hypertensive males uh, who were coming into the clinic and what we did was we looked at how they were having both peripheral arterial disease as well as erectile dysfunction in hypertensive patients. And even though we are told that there is an age-related causation towards erectile dysfunction where most men over 50 years or so have erectile dysfunction, up to 50% of people in the, in the Western data, what we found is even with hypertensive people, if you picked up with the simple questionnaire that we used, um, you'd have up to 95% of the people we interviewed had some form of erectile dysfunction. So it showed that it is a very common event and it's not related to just one causation of, of age. It, it spanned age groups from 30 uh, years old all the way to the 70 years old. So what we'd like to bring out from this is that it's common, it's, it's there. It's something that people shouldn't be afraid of because this is usually something which continues to be a taboo thing, even though now there's been a lot of improvement in, in health-seeking behavior. Uh, it is something that's very common. Wellness check, no. I have not done it. Uh -huh. Yes. You see, uh -huh. men are normally very afraid to have uh, checkups. Uh -huh. They prefer to send ladies to do it for them. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I haven't, I haven't done a wellness check. Uh -huh. No? Uh -huh. I've never done that. So, I didn't see the need of doing it. In most cases, the stigma behind wellness tests, normally we drop it to our wives and women. So women know best. In Nairobi Hospital, we have various treatments available, which is excellent because we both have the medical and we have the surgical components which are available. The medical components which would go in with what we have discussed like in the paper we wrote um, is to deal with your hypertension, to deal with your atherosclerotic disease, to deal with the diabetes, to deal with medications that you could be on, to deal with um, the psychological aspect. And when that is unsatisfactory or it is not giving what we would want, then we also have the urologic aspect the Eurosurgeons would come in 
And even though this erectile dysfunction has been the forte of the urologist per se, we have realized that it needs to be a back and forth. The new nutritionists are involved, the psychiatrists are involved, the general physicians, the internists, the nephrologists. We are all supposed to be a team uh, dealing with this matter because it's not just one person's uh, total discussion. Erectile dysfunction is both, it, it has a two-pronged point. It is controllable, it is curable. Controllable in the fact that if you find that there is an underlying disease, diabetes, hypertension, drug relation, you change that, you, you get the, the exercise, you get the lifestyle component done, you stop the smoking, things improve, the patient gets better, it's cured. If it is a vascular component underlying, so in that case then when we do the Dopplers of the, then there is imaging involved in that, and you look at the Doppler and you find that there is um, actual blood flow reduction or like now in the study that I did, you have peripheral arterial disease as a component to it, then you realize that there is other things that could be involved. It may not be curable, but it may be now controllable. And that's when now, when you find it that way, then it's important to look for the other things. So what we're looking at now is seeing that erectile dysfunction is becoming uh, a sentinel event. It shows up three to five years even earlier than a stroke and, or, a, or a heart attack. And these are important figures to remember. So when we discuss this with patients, we tell them, thank you very much for bringing this up because we can now look at something else that could have been much more tragic to you than something that you felt that you couldn't talk about. Most men, when they come and they need to talk about sexuality, they'll fear, they'll fear, they'll always tell me, sister, get for me so and so, a male nurse, so that they can talk freely. So at least when I, fe I see they're fearing, I, I call the male nurse to take care of them. For the cancer patients, actually, the erectile dysfunction is it's there, because most of the treatment that they get, it affects their organs. So they come with that sexual dysfunction, but we always talk to them. When, before we give the chemotherapy, we explain them, to them the side effects, what will happen. They'll have the erect, erect, erection, but the fertility will not be there. There is that ego in men that always, if you, they say you want to destroy a man, destroy the ego. So that ego is always there in men. So they will want to hide behind the curtains and they hide behind the alcoholism, taking drugs, so that they avoid the real issue. Well, it, it, it's not something that someone would uh, come out to say, but, uh, well, there's a time I was with a guy in a club, <laughs> and then he started opening up about some of these issues that he was having. So I asked him, what does he do? I, he said he takes Njugu Karanga, it's doing Bokero, that one. Uh, given I come from the western side of the country, mm -hmm. there's some traditional hub. It's called Mugombero. Mm -hmm. Yes, this has been uh, helping men with such kind of problems, mm -hmm. but uh, it is somehow temporarily because mm -hmm. uh, they have a relapse once they use this for some time. So with, with pill-free treatment then um, there's options. One, you look at your nutrition, you look at the medication that somebody could be on, you look at their disease and lifestyle components, and then finally you look at the options that you have available for treatment. So if it's pill-free that you want, it means that the person doesn't want to be having something in their pocket all the time. Injections are available that can be used at the point when the person wants to go ahead with his, with his activity or you now look at diet and lifestyle. If there's smoking, stop the smoking. If there's alcohol involved, then you, you reduce or you stop. If there's a dietary aspect to it, then you look at the cholesterol M input, you look at the going towards more of a vegan diet and seeing how you can improve the lifestyle component exercise improves the nitric oxide uh, which is needed for this purpose and um, if that fails then you have again the, the surgical aspect that can be done. As I had said before at one time this is usually the last it's the doorknob question as the patient is walking away from you he then says Daktari there is one last thing I need to talk about 
So in order to get that out of people's way, what we have done is instituted putting in a questionnaire. So no one talks to you as, a, as you're, you're on your own. And when you answer these questions, it's, it can pick up. It can be a red flag for somebody. Um, but the main thing is it's a both sides of the divide. Doctors have to be more sensitized. Patients have to be more sensitized. People have to be more sensitized. So the more this sort of thing is done and the education gets out there and the myths and the, 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 the problem of the taboo of saying I can't discuss this gets out of it and somebody realizes, hey, you know what, I've got to actually have this discussed, then it improves everything because then the health seeking behavior improves. It's very different to have somebody who is young and say, hey, I'm married or I, I only need to have myself ready uh, for an erection and have my sexual contact once a month versus somebody is like, hey, look, I have two wives or I have, you know, I have, I have a young wife who, who will need me to be there more often than not. So the requirements would be very different. You would skip over many of the options that you have versus going for drug and or the surgical aspect. Yeah. In most cases, I say there is ego, men's ego. Also, there is that throwing back to the women, say the user knows best. So they say user friendly, the one who will utilize the gadget knows better. Most women, me included, we shy away from this, this erectile dysfunction, but it's real. I've had an experience of a lady coming to me telling me this, like this, my husband is suffering from this, but doesn't want to go to hospital. But as a medical person, I always encourage women to tell the husbands to go for checkup. It's actually, it can be resolved. Well, once you're married, the two of you need to communicate. Talk to your husband. Sometimes they shy away, but we need to talk to them and encourage them that something that can be treated. If this is something that is affecting anyone, it is important to bring it up. You can have a con candid conversation with any doctor, nurse. It's, it's, it's easy to start up the project, the, the conversation. It's not hard to have somebody uh, discuss it with you. And no one's going to really give you a hard time about it. We'll be able to talk to you about it and, and look, for, look for solutions. So seek medical advice.